Hello friends, welcome to Tech Greens. So in the in our series Spark into a question, today we'll look at what is Spark SQL. So guys, Spark SQL is a module in the Apache Spark world which integrates relational processing with the Spark's functional programming API. So guys, this is one of the most important modules in the Apache Spark. Uh, it provides an integration between the Spark's functional programming APIs uh, with the relational processing. So as most of you would be aware, uh, most of the data processing used to happen in the relational world where SQL, T-SQL used to be the standard languages of processing the data. And most of the data engineers come from that background. Keeping this in mind, uh, Apache has added a Spark SQL as a module which provides an integration integration between the Spark high-level functional APIs to process the data of, in the SQL-like construct so that it can, uh, it can bridge uh, the gap between the uh, relational processing of data, uh, which we can say is the SQL world, with the Spark's functional world. So uh, this module can support uh, querying or processing data either using the plain native SQL or Hive query languages. We'll, we'll look about Hive query language in the further videos, but you can see more or less uh, this module is meant to facilitate programmer to use SQL within the Spark functional programming APIs to query or process the data. So uh, Spark SQL, as we have already discussed, is an easy transaction for a lot of developers working in, in the RDMMS world. Uh, they could have easily moved from uh, their earlier uh, tool set to uh, Spark SQL module and they can leverage their SQL skills here with the Spark APIs as well. So this kind of, uh, you know, with the Spark SQL as a module, we're trying to extend the boundaries of traditional data processing with the Spark distributed world. Um, at the same time, apart from providing extensive support for relational processing, uh, it also provides the support for various data sourcing. It provides a lot of libraries and APIs to read and write data from a number of different data sources. It could be your RDMS uh, SQL engines. It could be your uh, file systems like HDFS. It could read from your NoSQL databases like Cassandra, HBase, and it can read also uh, read from your graph databases. So Spark SQL has given uh, support for uh, various data sources uh, <clears throat> which makes it possible to write your SQL queries to do the code transformation uh, which uh, eventually makes Spark SQL a very powerful tool which can bridge uh, the two, two ends of data processing. One is your uh, relational approach and another one is the Spark's functional approach and Spark SQL uh, builds the bridge between these two processing worlds. Uh, there are four libraries provided in the Apache Spark SQL. Uh, we have a data source API where we have provided a lot of adapters and connectors to connect with a number of different source. Uh, data frame APIs to uh, represent the data in the form of uh, RDDs with name columns and the high level uh, APIs uh, comes along with it, which can be used to perform different kinds of transformations and actions. Um, it, Spark SQL also uh, uh, added one interpreted, interpreter to uh, read the relational processing and convert it into the <coughs> functional uh, uh, processing in the form of RDDs, RDD lineages. And uh, there is a catalyst optimizer is also added to optimize the, uh, the query plan, physical plan for the SQL submitted for relational data processing. There's a SQL service which take all of this into account. All of this means your uh, data RDD and the SQL construct that you have uh, sent through the Scala functional programming combines the two and produces the uh, Spark SQL results. So the, the whole of the Spark SQL module is consist of four libraries. Guys, let's try to understand now how Spark SQL works with this uh, with this picture. So as we have discussed, uh, first components is uh, a data source APIs, which gives a facilitation to connect 
read and write data from a number of different sources like Hive, NoSQL, like Cassandra, HBase, your HDFS file systems uh, in the form like Parky or Evro, your relational world, MySQL, Oracle, etc. And uh, data can be onboarded and read uh, and read from all these different sources with the help of like data source APIs and libraries. And then uh, we can apply data frame uh, transformations and actions on top of it, uh, to which will produce the named columns, uh, which that is how data frame is presented. It's a, it's a it's a data with uh, the name columns. The scheme is already applied, and uh, then this is submitted to uh, the uh, Spark SQL interpreter, uh, uh, which works along with the Catalyst optimizer to prepare a, a query plan and produces in the uh, RDD lineage uh, with the different uh, transformation. Uh, uh, transformations applied and uh, what all different actions are called and then this information is uh, the, the execution plan which is created by the interpreter on the uh, submitted uh, uh, data frames and RDDs it's submitted to the Spark SQL service which will uh, actually materialize the processing uh, on the underlying data set and will eventually produce the Spark SQL results. So this is the high level flow how Spark SQL works. Uh, starts with the data source and on that data source once that data is onboarded in the Spark SQL context then data frame APIs can be applied on it. Uh, the representation of uh, the data onboarded from different sources would be your uh, would be data frame and then you can apply all the available operations on data frame. Then that goes to the uh, SQL interpreter, Spark SQL interpreter, uh, along with the optimizer, which produces uh, the execution plan. Uh, the underlying uh, uh, RDDs and lineages, along with the execution plan, goes to the Spark SQL service, which finally produces the result. So that is the high level flow for Spark SQL. So, guys, uh, that's it in this video about Spark SQL. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.